Hi, I'm Mangesh Ghogre. I'm a crossword constructor and you are listening to Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing. Yeah. My name is Abhay Dandekar and I share conversations with talented and interesting individuals linked to the global Indian and South Asian community. It's informal and informative, adding insights to our evolving cultural expressions, where each person can proudly say, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Periodically on Trust Me, I Know What I'm Doing, we share a spotlight conversation and feature brief chats with an individual from the community about a special topic or a unique endeavor. So, you know, I thought that today we would focus on the world of puzzles. As kids, young and old, we are fascinated and curious about putting together random pieces of cardboard to make a picture, or taking numbers or scenes or words and fitting them together to make something whole, craving that satisfaction to find the answer, and of course, all the frustrations and exhilarations that come with it. Whether you're doing Sudoku or playing a game or proving online that we're human and not robots, puzzles keep our minds focused on solving problems. For many across the world, crossword puzzles are part of a daily routine, trying to find different ways to use and frame words from clues that playfully speak to everyday culture, trivia, knowledge, and even local or global nuances. So it was really fun to catch up with crossword puzzle constructor Mangesh Ghogre, the first India-based crossword constructor for the Los Angeles Times in 2010 and the New York Times in 2013. Mangesh is an investment banker and a writer and has had a true passion as a crossword puzzle solver and constructor since his college days. His expertise has developed over decades and his work and writing have been featured in The New Yorker, The Times of India, and The Economic Times, among others. Mangesh is currently the editor and constructor for the mini crossword in the Forbes India magazine, and some of his marquee New York Times crosswords include a 4th of July themed crossword in 2017, a Mahatma Gandhi themed crossword in 2019 to celebrate Gandhiji's 150th birth anniversary, and a Taj Mahal themed crossword in 2023 to celebrate India's Independence Day. I was able to chat with him this summer, and in true puzzle solving fashion, we started out with the basics. How did how did crosswords particularly pique your interest? And and the reason I ask that is because is puzzle building and the patience required to build and master and solve problems are they all kind of proxies for your own personality as well? <laughs> there are, I think multiple questions in that. The first one, how did crossword pique my interest? It was slightly uh, incidental. So when I, when I was in my first year of engineering way back in 1997 in BJTI, if you are familiar in Mumbai, you know, it was pretty much par for course for people to study the Barron's word list to prepare for mm. either the GRE or the GMAT. And yeah. I was in hostel and I was surrounded by all these, you know, top rankers, academically brilliant minds who, you know, wanted to improve their vocabulary and or at, our, at our hostel breakfast table, we used to wonder whether solving the Times of India crossword will help us improve our vocabulary. Yeah, And that's where my journey started. That, you know, so we were like, and I come from Marathi background. I used to, I grew up in Panvel uh, at the, on the outskirts of Mumbai. Though I went to an English medium school, but in those days, you know, early 80s, even though you went to an English medium school, you won't actually converse in English. In mm. fact, you will converse in English if you want to make enemies, right? Nobody right. will talk to you. Yeah. So we never actually spoke English. And our limited uh, knowledge was, or exposure was, if you remember in early 90s, HBO and Star movies came to India. Yeah. So we had eight channels on our TV and all of those eight, one was Star movies. And they played, I think, one movie a day. And there were no subtitles, right? Then. Right. So that was our sort of exposure to the English world. So we thought this is a newspaper which comes to our home pretty much every day, almost free, doesn't cost much. Yeah. And it helps you to test our vocabulary. So that's where crosswords became a medium to solve one problem, which was to improve our vocabulary. Mm. An eventual game aim was to improve our GMAT score or GRE score or whatever. Right. But I think it was the ecosystem of VJTI. Yeah. I mean, we used to joke that if you dig in VJTI anywhere, you will find a balance word list. It yeah. was it was so prevalent. Yeah, people used to carry it everywhere. So you know those flashcards well, and all that. 
Yeah. And, and so, I mean, definitely a vehicle for academic success and of course, you know, taking a, an exam. And yet, was there something in you inherently that was, you know, kind of the, there were already the ingredients of puzzle solving. And, and again, the patience that's required not only to solve, but eventually now create. I think again, um, if I if I think about it, uh, the the reason why it picked my interest in crosswords were two things. One was that I had started, studied Sanskrit in my grade eight to grade ten. Mm. Sanskrit is a very cryptic or a very coded language, as pretty much any language is. But the way my teacher taught me was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And uh, I still remember those subhashitas, which which were very very cryptic. In two lines, they will give you a, such a beautiful summary. Sure. So that was one reason was to see a language where a lot is hidden, right? And you have to discover. Hmm. So some kind of a treasure hunt. Yeah. And the second reason was symmetry, or a rhythm. In crosswords, if you see in any American crossword grid, it is symmetric. So if you turn the grid upside down or left to right, it looks exactly the same. So it's symmetric. And so is Sanskrit language. It's very, very rhythmic. Yeah. So for example, if you study Sanskrit, if you look at, you know, the tables which go into grammar, Devo, Deva, Deva, Devo, Deva, Bhyam, Devanti. It's a, it's a table of eight by eight. It's a very, very rhythmic and it's a proper mathematical logic to it. Yeah. So those two things that there is a language which you can discover and second, that there is a rhythm, there is a symmetry, picked my interest. Because if you master the rhythm, you master the language. I, I didn't actually expect that Sanskrit and crosswords would somehow intertwine (laughs) here like this, but that's beautiful and it's very elegant. And I imagine that, in fact, there certainly is uh, clearly a science and a logic and a mathematics, mathematical calculus um, to this. And as well as being a style and an art to solving and even constructing a a crossword puzzle, are, are those two blends of the science and the rhythm, let's say, of Sanskrit and even the design of mm-hmm. a crossword puzzle, as well as the art and the style, while they might serve as your as your signatures when you're designing and constructing uh, a puzzle, you also have to keep an empathetic eye on your puzzle solver. Yes. <laughs> so so as a as a puzzle constructor, if you think about the art the science, the math, the logic, yeah. and now your puzzle solver. How have you been able to achieve that balance, particularly when it comes to creating puzzles? So again, it was a natural progression given that before becoming a constructor, I was a solver for almost like 12, 15 years. Yeah. So I had been in those shoes for a pretty long time. Right. So I knew how that side works. So when I came on the other side, it was very easy for me to imagine what should happen so that the aha moment appears. Mm. As a constructor, I joke with myself that if I make a beautiful puzzle, but if my crossword solver is not able to solve it, yeah, it's a failure. Mm. To put the other way around very subtly, when my solver wins or let me rephrase it. I'll be more than happy to lose if my solver wins. If I win, that means the puzzle is not solved. I don't see it as a victory. Hmm. So I have to lose. I have to be on the loser side. The puzzle has to be solved. Yeah. So then the pressure is on me to be a loser. <laughs> By the way, which is a very, very different construct in investment banking, I would say. <laughs> oh, God, you you hit the nail. Yeah, investment banking is <laughs> polar opposite. You know, you are like a doggy dog world multiplied by 100 where Correct. Uh, I will kill you, but I'll make sure I win. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, you know, this notion that the the solver really has to has to win. And of course, 
in a way, you're serving as a guide, as a yes. docent, as a um, someone who's really helping someone navigate through a puzzle yeah. by giving them clues, by giving them different hints. And yet yeah. you also know as a puzzle master that there are varying degrees of skill in being able to do this. So as someone who has been a puzzle solver all, you know, from a good majority of your life and, and now also have been, been a master puzzle constructor, um, how do you get unstuck when you're actually either solving or constructing a puzzle? Have you found any secrets to mastering that part of, you know, how do you get beyond sort of these common hurdles that people, that everyone goes through sometimes in, in a crossword puzzle? Yeah, so while solving, there's a very beautiful experience I have had and I have ex lived it many, many times. And I, am sh I want to relate that. Yeah. is that when you solve a puzzle, uh, let's say you solve it, you know, 50, 60, 70, 40%, whatever, midway, and you are stuck. Try this next time. Leave that puzzle and just digress somewhere else. Okay? Yeah. It, it's like you leave that puzzle cooking in your brain. Okay? Then you come back after a few hours or some time and you will see that somehow the answer pops out. Mm. I have lived that so many times and I am amazed that how the mind works. Right. So that's one, I will not say trick, but that's an experience. It may not yeah. happen to everyone every time on the first go. Right. But, you know, in, in our regular parlance, we say, you know, sleep over it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's right. something similar. Then obviously I was very, very disciplined uh, as a solver, very, very disciplined. Mm. So if I solve a puzzle today and if I don't know the answer, the solution comes the next day, I will go through every clue which I got, which I did not get, and I'll make notes. Interesting. I was yeah. like mad about it, mad. Right. I still have those notes and those diaries. So discipline is critical in mastering um, crosswords. So it needs to be iterative. You need this. You need to learn from each puzzle. Yeah, you need to learn from each puzzle, and you need to make yeah. sure you retain that learning. Because yeah. I'll tell you a clue today. You will read the answer, and you will feel that you got it. But if I'll ask the same clue after six months, you may not remember it. Yeah, yeah. Right. But if you write it, and if you write it every time it comes, the tenth, eleventh time you will get it. Yeah. So. As you can see, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of discipline. As a constructor, if I get stuck, I have a lot more uh, flexibility because mm. if suppose I'm making a puzzle, it doesn't work, I can scrap it without anybody coming to know about it. Right, right. So you don't know that, you know, the puzzle is coming to you is my first draft or the 100th draft or the 50th <laughs> draft. Right? Yeah. So life is a lot more easier there. Uh, yeah. But again, one or two uh, lessons. One is that, you cannot fall in love with the idea. For example, I made a New York Times crossword to celebrate uh, Indian Independence Day mm. last year. And the theme was Taj Mahal. So I actually made the shape of the Taj Mahal in the puzzle. Yeah. Now, while making that puzzle, I wanted some more nuances of the Taj Mahal to be in the grid. Now, I tried it, but it, no, it was not working out. So then I had to kill it. Mm. So that I think is very difficult as a constructor because you feel that you are making a literal Taj Mahal, which is, you know, you know the wonder right. of the world. And to get rid of it uh, is, if you can master that, uh, you actually grow faster. But yeah. it's very tough because you are in love with that idea. You think this is, you know, the thing to happen and nobody has tried this before. Right. But I think master constructors master that, that they can kill the idea. Mm. So no one is really seduced by any one thing. Yeah, because the resource is unlimited of ideas, is unlimited. Yeah, There's no limit. But if you think that this is the best idea, then it becomes that much more difficult to leave it. Yeah. Because the next well, best idea is just waiting for you. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> well, and, and, and again, you said that like nobody who's solving the, the puzzle that you've created really knows whether this was your, your first draft, yes. your hundredth draft, yeah. or... Or, you know, the idea that actually came after six tries, yes. that kind of thing. Correct, correct. In fact, uh, what I, an average New York Times puzzle for me will take like six months to make, at least. 
people yeah. will solve it in less than a minute. Right, right. And people will be like, it was buck, it was crap. Yeah. <laughs> it took six months, but they don't care. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, in that way, the crossword puzzles are, again, something of a, an art even to solve. And it's a passion, it's a hobby. But for those who are perhaps beginners, right? What would you say are, you mentioned this already, which is, you know, you sleep on it, you, you let things marinate and ruminate a little bit, but yeah. what strategies and methods should beginners use to get to know crossword as a, as a puzzle and, and become more advanced, at sure. least get beyond that sort of initial stage of, you know, almost stage fright, right? That yeah. like, you're like, oh gosh, this is daunting. I'm not sure if I can <laughs> tackle this, but I'm interested in it. So wh wh how do you get over the hump, so to speak? So I'll say three things. You know, point one is treat crosswords as a language. Hmm. So just as you speak, uh, when you start learning as a kid, you don't start saying or speaking a sentence first. You start with the basics. Then you learn a word, then you learn the grammar, and then a sentence is formed. So similarly in crosswords, your first, let's say, couple of weeks will be only looking at the clues, looking at the answers. Right. Don't even try to solve it. Just look at the clues, just look at the answers every day or whatever frequency you decide, and just start building that how this X is equal to Y, X is equal to Y. Because every crossword is a reflection of somebody's mindset. Like my mm. crosswords is a reflection of my mindset. The way I clue, the way I tell you, uh, the clue is different from how Abhay will clue it. Right. So you need to get the hang of how the constructor thinks. So that's step one. Yeah. Step two, uh, as I mentioned, you need to be a lot more patient. So the basic unit of frequency in crosswords is decades. Hmm. Uh, it's not days, it's not weeks, it's decades. Yeah. Uh, because that's how it is. And as I compared it with a language, if you learn a language, you will not forget it before a decade. Even right. if you don't use it, you will not forget it stays. Mm. But it takes time to pick it up. So yeah. don't expect that you will become, you know, master of it quickly. So need to have right. patience. And third, you know, the way... The way crosswords, at least my crosswords, test you is they keep you hungry for looking at multiple ways of looking at the same problem. Mm, yeah. So, for example, a word will have so many different meanings that you need to be curious to know how many more meanings there are to this word. Like just yesterday, I was chatting in my community. We were discussing a word stuff. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And I had the same word as the clue for two different answers. So the clue was tough. The answer was clog, four-letter word. Right. And the clue was again tough. And the answer was sate, S-A-T-E, as yeah. an appetite. Yep. So we were just discussing. And the next day, that means today, I had another clue, which was good stuff, which is yeah. well done. The same word has so many different meanings, and I'm sure stuff has at least 50 more meanings, right, which are right. waiting to be discovered. So that mindset will keep you going. I love that. And as a constructor, my job is to show you those many colors. Yeah. It's like, you know, the example I give, you know, when we were kids, everybody had that one crayon box. It will mm -hmm. have standard 12 colors, right? One red one blue, one green. But if I give you a same crayon box, which will have seven different shades of green, right? eight different shades of red, yeah, it opens up your mind. I, I love that. I love the idea of, you know, so many shades of, of a color and this rhythm and patience and, and yeah. you know, that, that crosswords are a language. So yes. all, all of those things, I think, cultivate a nice, I think, shape to hopefully crosswords being the kind of puzzle that someone can enjoy for, for decades, as you say. Speaking of language, do you do crosswords in Marathi and Sanskrit as well? No, not not really. Uh, I have neither solved them. Uh, construction is a lot more difficult because then, you know, you need a software which handles yeah. uh, Devanagari script. Sure. But as of now, no, not, not really. Maybe yeah. AI will help me to get there. <laughs> 
and yeah. it would be brilliant to see that confluence coming together right right uh, but it is well, possible and and I'll yeah, on that same note right i mean there's so many different shades to our identities and and who we are you were the first indian yeah based crossword constructor for the la times and the new york times yep and and you have a obviously you know some great work that's out there in, in multiple publications and of course your your book on many crosswords that that's actually and by the way i love that that book that provides a soft sort of intro to bollywood and cricket and some good nostalgia things as well why is being an indian crossword constructor so important to you and particularly therefore valuable to the kind of puzzle community one simple fact india has the largest speaking english speaking population on the planet right we are i will not say supposed to but we are entitled to entertain ourselves in that language mm. and we don't have our own crossword how why not acceptable 95% of crosswords which get published in indian newspapers today are imported from either us or uk mm. yeah. which have their own local flavor to it rightfully so but why is like the reason i became a constructor is because i grew up solving an american crossword sitting in mumbai with no internet and no bolly, no star movies or hbo i did not know what's a coyote i did yeah. not know what's a turnpike and i right. did not know what's a blt yeah but i was made to solve it and even today it is it is done so that's why i said okay as as mahatma gandhi said you know you you need to solve the problem you know be the change you want to see mm. so i want to see this change so i'm trying to make my own indian mini crossword so that people who are who love the language can explore a crossword which will give them their own flavor well that's first off fantastic because there is a a great pride in what you do and it comes across in your work and i'm so grateful that there are many who are out there who are getting to enjoy this and really discover and renew their passion for for crosswords uh with you every day absolutely I have a very vibrant community on WhatsApp as well as on my website. You know, there are people from 10, 12 countries who solve my minis every day and these are all Indian minis. So, I'm glad that that problem is getting solved. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And 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 again, hopefully it means more and more fans and and puzzle solvers are appreciating your work all the time. Mangesh, what a treat to to have a brief conversation with you and uh we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks a lot of for having me. Thanks Mangesh and please learn more about his work at mangeshgogre.com. Again, if you have a chance and have been enjoying these, please take a moment to offer a kind rating or review wherever you might be listening or watching. And remember that if you're in the US, get out there and register to vote and please go to vote.org. Till next time, I'm Abhay Dandekar.